Is time in range a better blood glucose measurement tool than A1C? Have you even heard of time in range? In this video, you're going to learn some new cutting edge information and we'll explain some key pitfalls with the standard A1C test. Time in range is a tool you can use to measure your percentage of time your glucose levels are within your target range compared to the amount of time in which they are either too high or too low. This can help you assess your risk for kidney disease, high blood pressure, and other complications, and also give you a sense of your progress if you're working to master diabetes. So in this video, you will learn how managing your time and range actually works, you will see how useful time and range is compared to A1C, and you'll get some quick tips to help improve your time and range. My name is Robbie Barbero. I've been living with type 1 diabetes for 23 years. I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor for over eight years, and I'm currently using the Dexcom G7. Continuous glucose monitors are often referred to as CGMs, which is what I'll be using during this video. I'm very passionate about this topic and can't wait to share some key tips that have helped me keep my time and range upwards of 80% on a consistent basis. Our coaching team at Mastering Diabetes has helped our clients optimize their overall blood glucose control using CGMs with all types of diabetes, including prediabetes, type 2, type 1.5, type 1, and gestational diabetes. The tips provided in this video apply to anyone who wants to improve their blood glucose control and maintain healthy insulin levels. Let's get started. The process of properly managing your blood glucose, also known as glycemic control, is a very important aspect of living with any form of diabetes. After all, controlling these fluctuations is crucial to reducing your risk for long-term complications like peripheral neuropathy, chronic kidney disease, high cholesterol, Alzheimer's disease, and many more. To do this, most doctors use a standard measure called the hemoglobin A1C to measure your blood average over 90 to 120 day period. The A1C measures the percentage of hemoglobin in your blood that has been glycosylated. This provides doctors with an indicator of how much glucose has attached to hemoglobin over the course of the lifetime of hemoglobin molecules, which is approximately 90 to 120 days. The higher the percentage, the more glucose has attached to hemoglobin and the higher your average blood glucose. The A1C test can also be used to diagnose diabetes based on the following guidelines. If your A1C level is below 5.7%, you are considered at the lowest risk for prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. If your A1C level is between 5.7% and less than 6.4%, you may be diagnosed with prediabetes. If your A1C level is 6.5% or higher, you may be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Now, if you're living with autoimmune diabetes, that's type 1 or type 1.5, interpreting your A1C can be a bit more challenging. We recommend maintaining an A1C value between 5.5% and 6.5% with a low frequency of hypoglycemia. That would be less than 4% as indicated by your CGM. But a new revolution is here, and it's more accurate and telling. While the A1C measurement certainly has its utility, time and range is quickly becoming a more valuable indicator of glycemic control. Monitoring your time and range allows you to determine a few key things that the A1C measurement does not directly measure. Mainly, the percentage of time within a 24-hour period in which your blood glucose values were in range as well as the percentage of time it was higher or lower. 
diabetes experts and researchers have agreed on a goal range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter. The most accurate way to measure time and range is through CGMs. These are medical devices that measure your blood glucose levels throughout the day. CGMs communicate with your mobile phone or a receiver, and some insulin pumps have integrated CGM functionality, which can help you automate insulin delivery using real-time data. Based on CGM data, you have real-time measures of your blood glucose 24 hours a day, which allows you to monitor your blood glucose closely and see trends. CGMs are prescribed by a physician and are currently most commonly used for people who are living with diabetes. Although there is a growing population of people who are not living with diabetes and use CGMs to optimize their overall metabolic health. This video will primarily focus on the relative benefits between time and range and A1C for assessing your overall diabetes health. So let's break down the difference between these two methods. Your hemoglobin A1C is a measure of how much glucose has attached to hemoglobin molecules found in red blood cells. While this is a helpful indication of your blood glucose trends in the long term, it can fall short if you're trying to improve your real-time diabetes control and prevent both highs and lows. Meals, exercise, and exogenous insulin all create fluctuations in your blood glucose levels, which can lead to alternating hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia throughout the day if not managed correctly. Your A1C value does not provide this type of accurate measurement of blood glucose fluctuations. It just provides a measurement of your average blood glucose value over 90 to 120 days. So your A1C is certainly helpful, but not as informative as your time in range. The largest landmark study supporting the use of time in range was the Diabetes Control and Complications Trial. It showed that through careful, intensive management, it was possible to avoid or lessen many of the long-term risks and complications of diabetes. So let's get into what we should be aiming for with a CGM. The time and range recommendations for each individual is different. Though many leading groups of organizations like the American Diabetes Association and other organizations have come to a recommended international consensus on a benchmark. This recommended blood glucose range is between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. This is an excellent benchmark but we recommend working closely with your doctor to determine the exact numbers you should be targeting. Now let's get into measurement. There are two ways to measure your time and range. The most accurate is through the use of a continuous glucose monitor with Dexcom as the current industry leader. The second is through the more old fashioned use of finger sticks throughout the day. Though not as accurate in terms of up to the minute monitoring of your blood glucose, this strategy can actually still be very effective. Taking finger sticks before and after meals, exercise, sleeping, or any other behaviors that can change the direction of your blood glucose trend can all help paint a reasonably accurate picture of how often you're in range. So now we know how to get that number. How can we improve it? Based on decades of personal experience and hundreds of studies referenced to develop the Mastering Diabetes Method, we've come up with five quick tips to help you improve your time and range. However, our most important piece of advice for time and range overall is to follow the Mastering Diabetes Method, which includes eating a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet, making use of intermittent fasting, integrating daily exercise into your routine, and using decision trees on a regular basis. These strategies are the key building blocks to getting control of your time and range, and without them, most of the other tips will not be very effective. If you've already started following the Mastering Diabetes Method, let us know in the comments, how are your results? 
Have you been dialing things in? Is your time in range improving? Let us know what questions you have. We would love to hear more in the comments. Number one, focus on insulin timing. If you inject fast acting insulin, pay attention to when you inject exogenous insulin. If you notice that you go out of range immediately after a meal, consider injecting earlier because insulin doesn't work immediately. This can help level out those spikes and increase your time in range. Number two, optimize your basal rate. If you inject basal insulin, optimizing your basal rate can help keep you in range while you're sleeping. Assuming you sleep for eight hours a day, optimizing your basal rate of insulin can give you one third of your day in range without any other changes to your diabetes management strategy. Number three, include greens and non-starchy vegetables in your meals. This is essential for people living with all forms of diabetes who want to begin the process of reversing insulin resistance and stay insulin sensitive for the long term. These foods can help blunt any blood glucose spikes after a meal by extending the rate at which glucose enters your bloodstream. Number four, take a walk after a meal. Walking after a meal can also help curb blood glucose spikes by inciting your body to start burning energy at a slow, sustainable rate. There's no need to exercise intensely or get sweaty, but simple movement can make a big difference in your post-meal blood glucose control. Number five, adjust your alarms. If you have a CGM device, adjust your alarms to beep before you go out of range, either too high or too low. This way, if your blood glucose is rising or falling, you're able to adjust and make a change early, keeping you in range for a longer portion of the day. Number six, a bonus tip is to eat slowly. Chew your food thoroughly. Take some time to express gratitude for the abundance in your life and watch how this simple adjustment improves your time and range. So what's the final word? Well, time and range goals can vary from person to person and depend on your age, health status, technology, and the type of diabetes you're living with. In general, here are good time and range goals to aim for. Stay between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter a minimum of 70% of the time. Time spent at or below 69 milligrams per deciliter should be no more than 4% of the time. Time spent at or above 181 milligrams per deciliter should be no more than 10 to 15% of the time. But we've actually found that those who follow the Mastering Diabetes Method can achieve a time and range between 70% and 93% while not being obsessed with looking at their CGM device too frequently. If you're looking for personalized coaching to help you improve your time and range and overall diabetes health, simply click the link below and book a free discovery call. You'll connect with a member of the Mastering Diabetes Enrollment Team. The purpose of the call is to learn more about you, your goals, where have you run into roadblocks, and to see if we can help. Our team will also discuss whether our private coaching or group coaching is best for you, and they'll find out if you would benefit from our brand new Mastering Weight Loss Coaching Program. And in the meantime, you can start working to reverse insulin resistance right now with our video on the insulin resistance diet. Is time and range better than A1C for assessing your overall diabetes health? Or should you stick to the classic A1C as your be-all, end-all of diabetes health? Well, in this video, we'll give you the answer. Time and range is a more accurate and helpful measure of your blood glucose management for anyone with diabetes. And this is especially true if you are living with type 1, type 1.5, or insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes. This is because your A1C value does not provide an accurate measurement of blood glucose fluctuations, it merely provides a measurement of your average blood glucose value over 90 to 120 days. So in essence, your A1C is helpful, but not as informative 
as your time and range. And that's the final word. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, you can click right here to subscribe.